psychologist and the executive director for health and community education at Piedmont Healthcare in Atlanta. I hate that you're not here with me here in studio in Atlanta, uh, but hey, if you're going to be out in <laughs> Amsterdam, that, that's all fine with me too. <laughs> um, so thanks for joining us. So, so first off, tell us more about this variant, Dr. Morgan. I mean, uh, how widespread it is, is it? And, um, you know, people who are getting this variant, um, you know, how, how bad or not is uh, the infection? And so we have three variants now, the XBB15 and also the EG5. Those are the ones that are rapidly becoming the most dominant variants in the United States and also around the world. As you noted, I'm here in Amsterdam today. But then we have this BA286 variant, which is an offshoot of Omicron, but another branch of the Omicron family, this BA2 branch. And so far, this particular variant has been interesting in that the World Health Organization has given it a uh, connotation of a variant under monitoring, even though it doesn't specifically fit the criteria. In fact, the World Health Organization altered the definition to include this particular variant specifically to include the fact that it has an unusual, unusually large number of mutations without a lot of genomic sequencing and that it's unclear what its evolutionary advantage will be. Generally, variants under monitoring show that they can outcompete other variants. This variant is not showing that it can outcompete. So the World Health Organization altered its definition just to include this variant. Generally though, how sick are people getting from COVID this time around? Are we seeing it coming in a milder form? And so far, the disease appears to be the same as the rest of this Omicron family. Don't forget, we are still in Omicron. There's so many sisters and brothers and cousins, it's hard to keep up, but this is still Omicron. And we're talking now about two offshoots of the same family, the same lineage of Omicron. So all of the symptoms are still the same, fairly mild. That being said, we have people who are immunocompromised or challenged in other ways. We certainly see hospitalizations that have nearly tripled in the last two months across this country, still not anywhere near the peak of where they were, but we have seen that trajectory, unfortunately, going in the wrong direction. And in August, we are almost at three times the number of hospitalizations uh, that we had in June. So who should be wearing masks? Should we be wearing masks? You know, Amra, I am here in Amsterdam at the European Society of Cardiology Conference. This is the largest collection of cardiologists that come together every single year from all around the world, 30 or 40,000 of us. And I have been speaking to my German colleagues, my Dutch colleagues, my French, my African, my Moroccan. And all of us are having the same conversation with regard to whether it is time to have patients coming into the office and staff masks. Because as you know, patients are also the public. The public comes in and what are those exposures to your staff and to uh, the people uh, with whom you employ there in your offices. And so we all have been having this conversation for the last couple of days. And I think everyone is waiting to see what is going to happen with BA286. We certainly don't want to jump the gun, but doctors, certainly cardiologists here are very much aware of the uptick in hospitalizations, emergency room visits, and even deaths. Very yeah. much aware of it. I'm definitely seeing uh, more and more people wearing masks. You know, I just uh, got off a, an airplane yesterday and I was wearing a mask um, uh, just to keep others safe in case, you know, uh, my cough, you know, would might be an issue. Um, let's talk about the vaccine. I, mean, I flew mm -hmm. here to Amsterdam mm -hmm. and I was one of only a few people with masks on as well. I'm, I'm back to wearing a mask on an airplane as well. Are you? Yeah, I mean, I forgot how uncomfortable it is, but I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> if it keeps others and yourself safe, why not? So, w what about these vaccines? Because this, uh, we understand that there's, there's a new one that's being formulated to keep up with these new variants. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if there are people who mm -hmm. are planning to get a booster like now, should they be waiting mm -hmm. for this vaccine to come out? And so if you need a booster, well, how most of us actually need a booster, it's been a while since we've had a booster, have the conversation with your physician with regard to whether you should move ahead to get that booster or wait for the new formulation, especially if you're immunocompromised. If you are immunocompromised, you have cancer, you have HIV, there may be other reasons where it might be advisable for you to go ahead and get a booster now and not wait. 
That being said, although the CDC director uh, announced to NPR earlier this month that the vaccines would not be available until October, we now have information that these new vaccines will come available uh, by September 15th, hopefully, and on September 12th, the advisory committee to the CDC will meet to set some final guidelines on how these vaccines will be distributed and who will get them. And so hopefully with that accelerated timeline, most people will be able to get in with this new vaccine that is specific to the XBB lineage, XBB15 and EG5. Um, and, and lastly, I am curious to get your take on, you know, the public sentiment because a new poll from Axios shows that COVID is at the bottom of Americans list for key public health threats. And it shows that 69% of Americans believe contracting COVID poses a small or no risk at all to their health. So when you're talking to patients, Dr. Morgan, I mean, does it feel like that they are still taking COVID seriously? And, and, and you know, how seriously should we, we, we be taking it? You know, I saw that report as well. Mm. And I think patients um, often when you come in to see your physician, you're having a different conversation and you're listening to try to understand how you're going to protect your health. But most people at any particular time in their life are not sitting in front of a doctor and having that patient conversation. We would like to see everybody come in at least once a year, but let's face it, most people do not see a physician once a year. So that is a, a, a narrow demographic. When we look at the BA286, we only see 10 cases worldwide. Those cases are unrelated, which is good news, but also bad news because it may pretend that it is more widespread than we actually can track and that we actually think since they are unrelated and we really don't have this surveillance. If the BA286 were to take hold, then our vaccines this year would probably be a poor match for this particular variant if it were to become dominant. That's a lot of ifs. That being said, we do have background. Uh, we are not a naive population anymore with regard to immunity. We all have some immune status, either via infection or vaccines. And so the, the new vaccine will be somewhat protective against BA286, but more effective against the currently circulating variants. Got it. All right. A lot to take into account with your doctor, Dr. Jane Morgan. <laughs> I'm going to call you. Thank you so much.